Well, um, the uh, work for the capacity building centre is very important because the um, issues that we have in cybersecurity cannot be solved by one player alone. It can only be solved through agreement and collaboration between stakeholders from different parts of the who are involved in the online um, environment, the online transactions and interactions that we that we do. And um, so it's really important to have a project where all these stakeholders are being brought together and start to understand what it looks like from you know what what perspective each of the other stakeholders have and really where that space is where through collaboration negotiation through building a more innovative understanding we can solve some of the problems or <laughs> maybe most of the problems that we have uh, in cyber security and in you know ultimately cyber security is about creating a uh, a safe um, platform for people to interact, to transact, to um, do any, anything from transacting business to learning um, to, to creating you know, new relationships and, and so on. That's, that's a big complex environment and so we really need a complex collaborative effort to try and secure it. Uh, most <laughs> most individuals don't really understand what uh, their risks and their responsibilities are when they go online to to you know anything from meeting <laughs> trying to find a partner to just buying something um, or getting getting medical advice whatever uh, the uh, problem that we face is that we normally learn about risks and rules for how to behave in a, in a safe or secure manner. We learn those things through a process called socialization. So this, the things our parents teach us, things we learn at school, the things we learn by looking at our peer community and, and following the rules there. The problem is that the speed at which the internet um, and the other technologies such as mobile phones and so on have arrived and become a part of people's life has been so fast <laughs> that uh, we've, most of us uh, have missed out on, these, uh, on, on that kind of knowledge as part of our socialization. And in fact, we're really scrambling at the moment still to, to try and get this, this kind of knowledge into the school's content for, for, for children, for young people who are growing up today. And um, so we're bringing our old, uh, our, our, um, the, our understanding of who you can trust, you know, what, what something that's dangerous looks like. We're really applying models that were uh, created for the physical world, you know, and, and rules that work well in the physical world. Um, but we don't realize that online they don't hold. So you don't... Um, you, it, most people are not aware how easy it is to impersonate somebody else online, for instance. Well, clear, clearly, uh, different, um, different cultures have different values and norms. And, uh, but if we are trying to solve uh, some of the, the, the online cybersecurity problems, the people, if we just call them the bad guys, <laughs> the bad guys use these differences to their advantage as much as possible. And they tr transact across borders that offers them at the moment a certain amount of protection. So if um, they, um, they're much more likely, for instance, um, that, that the police or, or the state security in their own country would, um, would try and um, find out who they are and try and act on things if they were attacking citizens in that country. And so um, in, in it's, it's also we can't ignore the fact that economically the world isn't an even playing field and if you're in a relatively um, impoverished, say former Eastern European country or in a developing country and you manage to, to make a good living by ripping off uh, wealthy Westerners um, in, in the first world, in the industrialized world, then um, the, the values, in, the norms and values in that country may be well good on you. Um, that's, you know, you're getting, 
your own back on uh, former colonial powers on countries who unfairly use their um, economic uh, sort of advance, uh, the, their advance position against us in many ways. So if we can basically redress that balance a bit by getting uh, money back from consumers who aren't particularly queued up or who don't care because the insurance pays, then that's okay. And I think part of the, the, the cultural is really to start understanding each other's position and what it looks like. And that actually helps us both to, to maybe find, find values and norms that we can agree on across cultures. And those need to be the building blocks for the collaborations we're building. Um, the other thing is also is that if we're trying to design defenses, um, ways of stopping um, attacks, you know, cyber terrorism, cyber crime, we need to, to really understand what will work in order to either deter or to identify um, and punish those people that, that do it. Um, and, and that better understanding um, really can only come if we understand the culture in, in that they operate, what makes them do this, what helps them do it, who's contributing, who's making it easy for them to do the same thing. Um, and m sometimes it can be questions such as, you know, is there, do they do it because <laughs> there is no other, there's no economic alternative for them, in which case we might actually think about creating business opportunities in those countries that would allow them to make a living in, um, in a legal way.